Hi friends, welcome to Sathvik Infotech uh, DevOps series. As part of this uh, day 16 session, we are going to understand uh, how to use SSH to configure passwordless connectivity. Okay. In general, okay, let me take a notepad. So, in general, you will have a source server and you will have a remote server. So, when we connect from source to your remote server, generally we go with passwordless connectivity. Okay, and the connectivity should be secure. So, in order to connect to the remote server securely using passwordless, okay, Linux server provide SSH mechanism, which is nothing but secure shell. Okay, how does it works? It works based on uh, key exchange. Okay. Okay, basically it works uh, with the process called key exchange process. Okay, so when I say key, next question will be what is the key you are going to generate? We are going to generate RSA keys in this case, right? Basically we are going to generate RSA keys. Okay, when we generate RSA keys, right? It can serve multiple purposes, but as part of this session, we are going to only focus the connectivity part. It again helps you to do symmetric encryption, asymmetric encryption and also there are uh, few other uh, SSH uh, configurations or there hashing algorithms other things like that. But we are not going to look into all those details rather we are going to see how do we enable a passwordless connectivity from one server to the other server using the keys. Okay. So, before we start right we need to understand these keys works with respect to the users. What does it mean? So, what I mean is, for example, let's take uh, DevOps is in one server and our Oracle account is in another server. If I do an key exchange between DevOps and Oracle, it means that from DevOps user in this server, I can connect to Oracle user on the other server. For example, if I did a key exchange to the Oracle server, and if I want to connect to some other Apache user, it won't allow you. It means that you are doing the key exchange to user level, not at the server level. Okay. So, let's try to do that, right? As we do not have uh, multiple server, I am going to do show you the demo with the help of one server itself. So, let me try to do SSH Oracle user at the same server, which is nothing but localhost. So, ideally, this is how we will do. Okay. Let me press enter. So, usually if you see, it asks you to save the fingerprint of the remote server so that it won't prompt you whether you know the server or not, right? So, I am going to give S. Yes. If you look at closely watch, it's asking me a password, okay? So, if I give Oracle, it allowed me to connect to Oracle at localhost, okay? So, try to capture what are the things it was like uh, prompting us. So, whenever you are trying to connect for the first time, it's prompt you to save the fingerprint of the remote server and also it's asking you to enter the password. So, let's look at, uh, let's think about this, right? In ideal scenario, when you work on, work with multiple Linux servers, okay, that too in our DevOps world, right? We might be working with multiple servers kind of for connecting either through our Ansible for deploying, okay, you will have a source code in dev server where you have to connect to UAT server to deploy your code or if you want to push any patches using Ansible or any other thing, right? Everywhere you use this, even like we do similar setup, even while we looking into our GitLab classes, like GitHub classes, okay, so that's the main reason we want to understand this very much, that's why I am even focusing this in today's session, okay. So, basically what I am trying to do? Whenever I connect to Oracle user, it should not prompt me for any password. So, that's the main intention. Okay, and the connection to should be secure, which needs to be connected through SSH. Okay, there are multiple ways of secure connection. Either you do secure SFTP, means like secure file transfer, secure SSH or secure copy, SCP. Whatever the operations you do, everywhere it should go as a passwordless. Okay, that's the main intention. Okay, let me exit out of Oracle account. Okay, clear. So, I came into DevOps account. Okay. So, 
as I mentioned earlier, right? So if I want to connect to any remote server, even from my Windows laptop, I need to enable SSH server on the system. Means that currently my server, which is like uh, residing in virtual box, okay, this server is acting as a SSH server. Okay, whereas my mobile XM is acting as a SSH client. If you have any doubts with these details, I would highly recommend you folks to watch our. I, if I remember correctly, it should be day two or day three session, where I explained how to use mobile XM to connect to your remote server. See, in this case also, we are using mobile XM to connect to the remote server, but we are using the password. Okay, but in order to set up that. We have installed few components on the server, which is nothing but SSH server agents. Okay, currently in our server, SSH server agent is running. So, if I want to generate a keys, okay, I can directly go and execute this command SSH hyphen keygen. Okay, if you don't have SSH server on your uh, machine, this command is not going to work out. Okay, so that's why I am uh, asking you guys to check out our earlier session. Okay, now. I am in DevOps account. I am generating a key here. Okay, it says like okay, the keys will get saved into id underscore rsa is a file in in the folder ssh dot ssh basically. So I am not going to change anything. I am going to press enter. So basically, it's asked for a passphrase. Okay, in what way you want to secure your keys? If you want to secure your keys, you can give some passphrase so that it will ask you to enter whenever you open this file. But in our case, I don't want to give anything. It's a blank. So it's ask you to enter again. I am going to ignore it as a blank. Okay, great. So with this, your keys got generated. Okay, in the folder called dot ssh. If you go and look at here, you will have like id rsa and id rsa pub. Okay. Before moving further, let me explain you what are those two files. Okay, id rsa pub is nothing but a public key file. Okay, id rsa is nothing but a private key file. Okay, so let us go back here, right? So ideally, if I want to enable a passwordless connectivity, okay, okay. Let us uh, take a small story here, right? Okay, let's take uh, this is A, this is B. Okay, so if A is someone who want to come to B's house, okay. Okay, if A is someone who want to come to B's house, okay, do B allow A directly? No. Let's take it can be anybody, right? It can be a pizza delivery guy or it can be a Zomato or Swiggy guy, right? We don't allow him directly. We will inquire him like, okay, whom you are, where are you from, what you are going to do, everything. So those thing is nothing but your password. So you are initially authenticating him whether he is the right person to enter your house. Okay, now. What I am saying, whenever A comes to our house, I want to make some identification so that A can enter my house directly without any kind of an authentication. So, for example, even though generally what we do, for example, if any new guest, maybe it will be our long relation or someone, right? If they are coming to your house for the first time, we will tell to your kids that okay, he is our mama, he is our uh, uncle, and everything, right? So once you introduce them to your home, from then onwards, whenever they come, your kids or your family will welcome him to the house. When he comes for the first time, we will inquire him like who is and everything, right? The same way. So in our case, it's nothing but a keys. So initially, A is a server and B is a server. When A tries to connect to B, B does not know who is A. So I want to enable a trusted relationship. Or if I want to enable a trusted relationship, so that B will recognize A whenever he try to access. Okay, so what should I do now? I will take up this public key and put it into okay, put it into Oracle accounts. So that's why. So it with respect to our our scenario, right? So this is DevOps. This is Oracle. So if I want to enable a trusted relationship between DevOps and Oracle. How do I do? I will take DevOps public key and put it into Oracle SSH folder. Okay. Okay. Let me do that. So in order to do that, 
there are two ways of doing it okay there are two ways of doing it let me show you the first way and i will also explain what is the drawback okay basically ssh copy id oracle at localhost okay now for the first time it asked me the password so i authenticated so why why it asked me the password i am trying to copy some file into oracle server so it asked me the password okay whether you know me or not so i authenticated him so it allowed me so now let's go into oracle now if you look at if i try oracle at localhost it doesn't ask me for any password it will allow me directly okay you got it it does not ask me anything it directly allowed me to log into oracle okay why this happen let us understand that now right so let us go into ls if any ltra grep for dot ssh folder i have an ssh folder created if you go into ssh folder you will have a file called authorized keys okay from the name you realize that right we are saying okay this file is going to figure out whether you are a known guy or you are an unknown guy so what ssh copy command does is it goes to the remote server create a ssh folder underneath it create a file called authorized key within authorized key it adds our public key okay maybe let me open a duplicate tab and show you See if you look at this public key has been copied. DevOps at localhost local domain, right? This public key has been copied within to authorized key file. Okay, that's why now if I want to connect to Oracle account, it does not ask me for any password. Okay, this is how you generally do this. Okay, there are points to remember, right? so whatever we did is one way connectivity okay so whenever you connect from devops to oracle it will not ask for password but the vice versa is not true for example if i connect from oracle to devops it won't work okay it will ask me the password so if i want to do the reverse also then i need to generate a key in oracle and share that key to devops server that's where the reverse process will work okay hope i made it very clear okay L coming to our next point right so there is an issue there is an uh, basically i don't call it as an issue basically it's an uh, process which all uh, every devops uh, person to understand okay so whenever you do ssh copy id okay if it is the first time okay then there won't be any issue the server will create the authorized key file okay the server will create the authorized key file and do it let's take a scenario right okay there is an authorized key file already exists with some key and if you do it it's going to override that file okay most of the time it will override the file so the, uh, we generally don't recommend uh, copying the uh, key file in this way so okay then kumar how do we do generally okay generally what we do we will copy okay we will open the id underscore rsa dot pub file copy the keys manually and paste it in the authorized key file okay this will be the normal process so okay now let me show you the normal process also how it works right because like uh, if you do normally you will able to know how to debug okay that's the main interesting point here okay see this permissions are really matters so authorized key file should be always 600 okay ssh folder should be always 7000 so remove hyphen f okay let me remove it completely right okay uh ls if an ltr a grip for 
dot ssh okay remove iphone rf dot ssh okay so in general what we will do we will come here we will make directory dot ssh if you look at the permission of the dot ssh it will be like default based on our umas setting okay guys this is the main reason i have explained you all the umas and everything up front before even we starting with all these sessions okay if you have any doubts with umas and other stuffs always feel free to refer our earlier sessions okay now if you look at ssh is having 775 which is not the recommended way because you are going to store the highly sensitive information within ssh so you should have always uh permission only to the user which is nothing but oracle so ch mode okay let us try with this right let the permission be the same vi authorized keys so usually we will create this file so after creating this file we will go here so we will copy this key file okay there is one more important part so whenever you copy this key file don't directly paste into the server because this will have a line breaks okay so you should put something in the notepad and do your word wrap if word wrap is enabled okay one second guys this is a new version i don't know where is the word wrap is so anyhow you have to make everything into a single line that's more important okay okay maybe let me see in notepad plus plus is there to 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 once again let me copy it again i don't know in windows 11 i don't know where it is word wrap edit find previous replace select time font okay here it is word wrap off so i don't want to have word wrap so let me paste it here yeah so that's great so it should be always in a single line okay ensure that you have the key file in a single line and then paste it in the remote server because most of the time what uh, people will do they will give some uh, multi line uh, key people tend to paste in the same way where you will end up in facing issue while connectivity okay now let me see i have added the uh, my public key into authorized keys so let us try to see what's happen now ssh oracle at localhost see now it's asking me a password so why it asked me a password we are not following the standards okay this will be again an interview question okay most of the places when you go for an interview and they want to drill down your knowledge on ssh and other stuff the question will be on the permissions okay so authorized key should be always 600 okay ssh should be always 700 okay if the permissions are not correct you are going to end up in an issue okay the permission of ssh is correct now authorized key is also correct so let us try again let me cancel this out here you go so now see earlier when we have a wrong permission it was asking me a password when i fixed the permission it directly allowed me to log in so keep the in mind guys so whenever you are doing for the first time ssh copy underscore id will work if it's already existing server don't ever try that approach you always manually copy and paste the content into your existing authorized key file okay if it is a already running server you will have authorized key file you need to paste into that or in in case if it is if it does not have also just go and create it and paste it and ensure that the permissions are 600 okay i hope i made it very clear 
this is very very important with respect to devops or if you are a developer or anybody right so this is very very important okay whenever you want to transfer a file using sftp this is how you do passwordless connectivity okay now i have did right so if i connect a uh, sftp also it will work in the same way for example sftp oracle at local host it won't ask me any uh, password because this is how the with the key exchange sftp is also going to work okay and the secure copy whenever you copy the file that's where also it's going to work in the same way but whenever you do sftp or a secure copy that's where like those asymmetric encryption or symmetric encryption or hashing algorithm those comes into the picture okay if you guys really interested to know all about this please comment your feedback i am happy to help you with that with a separate session thanks for watching if you feel it this is interesting please subscribe to our channel share to your friends thanks for watching again thank you